Okay, so I'm delighted to be joined by John Bennett uh, from WSP. John, tell me about what your team does. Uh, so we have uh, a huge, huge team of asset engineers and asset managers, um, and we support our clients to uh, every stage in the asset lifecycle and every level of asset support. So through to, we, we'll do strategy and policy for asset owning organizations. We'll develop standards and, and tactical advice for particular areas of asset uh, management. And we'll, we'll carry out on the ground interventions. So we, we might design strengthening, we, we, we might um, carry out assessments, we'll do inspections, um, investigations. So we, we do the whole, the whole piece from um, those kind of individual asset level pieces of work all the way up through to the strategic and, and policy. Thank you. And, and tell me, um, what role does data play in, in, in all those pieces? So I think data is fundamental to supporting asset owners to take decisions about interventions and maintenance. And you know, one of those challenges that we often have is um, that getting data is expensive and that we know that the data that we have is um, is sometimes patchy or unreliable and that, that collecting data can in, in itself be an expensive and, and time consuming task. But we will always try and find, uh, make use of asset data to inform those decisions. And that, that might be data that's come from qualitative assessments, such as inspections or you know quantitative assessments of condition or et cetera. Or it might be quantitative data that's come, for example, from our structures investigations group and this portfolio of testing that they might do on the assets like chloride um, concentrations or um, half cell potential testing. And, and we will pull all that together. And, and part of the role that we have as engineers is to draw those different sources of information and data that we have on the asset together to make recommendations to our clients. You talked about the cost of acquiring data and kind of the availability of data. Are there any other challenges you you come across with the data that, that you work with? Yeah, unfortunately there are. So, um, you know, I think some of the some of the data that we use and we, we base a lot of our decisions on is by its nature qualitative. And, and mm -hmm. that means that it, it is vulnerable to kind of human factors um, and subjectivity on the part of the individuals who are carrying out those assessments. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we've done some studies looking at the reliability, for example, visual inspection data. And, you know, we can see that there's huge variability in what results we get back depending on who we send out and whether it's raining or whether it's sunny or, or um, you know, what types of assets and defects have seen recently. You know, so you there are a whole bunch of cognitive biases that engineers are and inspectors are vulnerable to. And mm -hmm. while we can do things around standardization and training to try and reduce those and, and reduce the, the spread of, of, of results that we get from different inspectors, that is always an intrinsic part of, of a qualitative assessment. So, you know, for us, that can make a big difference. You know, if, if we're recommend, recommending millions of pounds worth of work on one bridge versus another, actually, it's really important to get that information as, as accurate as we can. That is a challenge that we see. And you've talked about decisions and recommendations and uh, using that data to inform it. And, and obviously, the, the next logical thing in 2025 is to think about artificial intelligence and the role that that plays where do you see artificial intelligence supporting um supporting the decision making so i think there are there are probably several places where artificial intelligence will have a role in the future um you know i think when we look at that when i say we're drawing together information from multiple sources you know sometimes for these older and larger assets you're talking thousands of documents you know mm -hmm. and those are documents in pdf form that the we might not have full sight of all of them. You know, we might just get a, a zip file of here's what the client can find or some scans of some stuff that's not searchable um, in that, that's been scanned in from a pile of paper documents that were moved from one shipping container to another at some point in history. And for, you know, unfortunately, it would be easy to potentially miss something. Mm -hmm. And it's really difficult to get that holistic picture of what's the state of the asset and its history. 
And, you know, as consultants, we often come in just for one discrete package of work on that individual asset. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like we've been looking after that asset all our lives and we know its history and we know that 10 years ago it had this type of investigation and they found this and they did this to fix it. We don't know that. And we often have, in a short commission don't have the time to find out. So mm -hmm. I think what would be amazing would be to be able to have all that information ingested and summarized for us by some sort of artificial intelligence agent mm -hmm. so that we have it at our fingertips and can you know ask questions about this bridge or or be given insights of you know actually you're working on the transverse beam here. Did you know it was hit by a lobby in 2006? Mm -hmm. And then it had heat strength slightly did to it, done to it. You know, do you, did you know that um, there were issues with, with um, construction quality when it was built? And this is the, the things that were done to remediate those. So getting that kind of holistic picture of the asset quickly and being able to make sure that the you know, often quite targeted interventions that were designed, designing and are involved in are aware of that wider picture for the asset and also the, where that asset sits within the network. I think, you know, just discreet from that, but you know, connected in some ways is being able to use artificial intelligence to understand the future performance of assets as well. So mm -hmm. at the moment, the processes we have that are quite primitive and deterministic, you know, and, and, and we actually you some of the biggest decisions we make at the more strategic end of our advisory services are around how many billions different governments and, and government departments need to maintain and, and, and um, look after their you know international you know nationally important pieces of infrastructure as, as those those networks and actually i think we can we know that there are limitations to the current approaches and i think that it would be possible for artificial intelligence to um, improve the reliability of our ability to predict future condition and at the moment i think we have we feel comfortable at a portfolio level although you know there's room for improvement what would be great would be able to see those that same level of confidence at an individual asset level and to be able to, for an individual asset, be advising on actually this is how long we, we think it might be until you need to intervene. So you can have that that picture and that be continual updating as you, as you get new information. Great. So we've got this kind of retrospective view going back, what's happened to this asset over its lifetime, consuming all that information and presenting a picture today of, uh, yeah. of what's happened to the, tell the story of the asset. And then the forecasting piece, what will happen next, uh, what could happen next and what's likely to happen next um, yeah. at that individual asset level rather than the the big numbers kind of averaging out across the portfolio. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. And, you know, I guess our engineers often only have, they only have the capacity to be in the present. Mm. They have to see, see, see the challenge they have now and to address it now. I think having artificial intelligence to be able to support them with the history and the future will add um, a richness to what they're able to do and advise that will deliver enormously for our clients in terms of the, the quality of the recommendations and the decisions that they make. And we started talking about data and kind of how data affects decision making. Now we've talked about AI and kind of a vision. What do you think that transition looks like from, from where we are today? To, to one that artificial intelligence is really supporting supporting that decision making. I think we're seeing we're seeing that transition now. You know, we're seeing you know we're we're working with with my foundry and um, you know we're seeing pieces of the of the picture where we can bring artificial intelligence to support and where it is obviously adding value now and today. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that will grow and it won't be a big overnight. We we we. we you know, suddenly have AI doing all this stuff for us. I think that we will grow services and, and um, bits onto the, the existing AI platforms that will um, add value to each of the steps that we do. As client maturity increases in that space and as, you know, we go through those cycles of refreshes of asset management systems and training of engineers, we'll see a steady growth, you know, over the next five, 10 years, I think, to, to a place where AI is part of the team. Mm -hmm. Now, and I, I, don't, I don't think anyone's really thinking that we're going to have a future where we don't have the engineers, you know, the AI yeah. is doing it. But what I see is the engineer is almost like the, the um, experienced engineer sat in the corner 
who's been there and seen it all and you can ask questions of it yeah and it knows the assets it knows what's going on it still needs an engineer to interpret and to make those decisions but you're able to do that in the with the richest data and, and information available and right. i think having ai to service that will be fantastic right thank you and is there anything else you'd, you'd like to share on this topic no i don't think so I, yeah, actually i think we've <laughs> got to the end Sure thing, no problem. Well, thank well, you very much, John. That's been uh, that's been really interesting, and uh, I'm sure, as you said, we, we're working together on uh, several shorter and longer term projects where um, tactical and strategic transformations are kind of happening. And as you say, I think we have to we have to find opportunities to implement things incrementally. When like waiting for uh, uh, kind of it to be ready, and the grand reveal of what we call the digital custodian is is you know, is never gonna uh, is never gonna fly. But there are there are little capabilities that we can start to introduce across the line that build up to, as you described, the the kind of the engineer in the corner that that uh, you can go to for advice. But but really, the decision rests with uh, rests with the engineering teams. Yeah, absolutely. Well, right. thank well, thank you very much. Thank you.